Hey, and welcome to my iPhone 10 video. So, uh, you might already know this, but I recently purchased this iPhone 10, 256 gigabyte storage version, uh, in silver, and it's already covered in fingerprints and smudges. And I just wanted to make a quick video to talk about uh, why I regret buying this. Now, it's not all bad news. Um, there are a lot of things I like about this phone, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it in the first place. But after using it for a few days now, there are a few things that I've noticed about it that I don't really like about it, and that's what this video is going to be about. Okay, so first of all, I just want to get the things that I like about it out of the way. So number one, um, I really like the design. Design is great. It feels really nice to hold and to use and to um, swipe around. And the cameras are really good. It takes very nice photos. It has two cameras on the back. One's a standard lens and the other one is a... If we can focus. The other lens is for taking portrait photos, which can blur out the background really nicely, kind of like um, a DSLR or one of those cameras can do pretty well. Uh, it's not really blurring out the background. It's like an artificial filter, but it's very convincing. Also, it's very fast, it's very snappy, it opens apps very quickly. Um, it never crashes, it's only crashed a few times when I was using iMovie, when it just suddenly shut itself down, which is a bit unexpected and disappointing. Now, the main reason why I decided to buy the iPhone 10 in the first place, instead of an Android phone, was simply because I've been using Android for the last eight years, and I'm bored with Android, I wanted to try something else. My first ever smartphone was an iPhone 4 back in 2010, so it's been a long time since I've used um, an iPhone. The most annoying thing is the camera. When you take a photo, it makes this sound. And it is so loud, and my phone is on silent mode, the volume is all the way down. You see I have the volume on mute, and you can't get rid of this shutter sound. And the reason why is because it's a Japanese iPhone, and in Japan the phones have to make a shutter sound when taking a photo. Because there's lots of weirdos who like taking secret photos of girls' panties. If you put it onto live photo mode, and then take a photo, it makes a quieter sound, which is great. But on portrait mode, there's no live photo, so if you want to take a portrait photo, it's going to make that sound. You can also take a silent photo if you start recording on a video and then you press that white button in the bottom corner. It takes a photo and it makes no noise, watch. You see, it's taking a photo and it's not making any sound. So if they wanted to prevent people from taking silent secret photos, um, they kind of failed. They only managed to stop people from taking silent portrait mode photos, which if you're going to take a silent photo, it doesn't really matter if the background's blurred out or not, you just go into video mode and then you start filming people and it's making absolutely no sound. If they really wanted to make it so you couldn't take secret videos of people, they would have to make it play a sound every five seconds when you're taking a video and that would be extremely annoying. There are a few apps on the app store, such as this one, which let you take photos silently. You see, there's no sound, which is great, so you can actually take photos without an irritating shutter sound. The only problem is there's no portrait mode on apps like this. There's no app on the App Store which lets you take silent portrait mode photos, which is which is very annoying. So the only solution to that is you cover up the speaker holes with your fingers and it makes a quieter sound when you take a portrait mode photo. I've heard that you can jailbreak the phone and then you can delete the sound files or there's this other App Store, this secret App Store that you can download onto your phone. Um, to get rid of the shutter sounds, but I'm I'm too lazy to do those things. Another thing I don't like is the microphones. There's there's several microphones on this. There's one on the back. You see this little hole here. That's a microphone. There's one in the top speaker in the notch, and there's one at the bottom for when you're taking when you're making phone calls or you're doing voice recording. And when you're taking a video like this with the rear-facing cameras, it uses the microphone next to the lens here, which is great. It captures 
audio that's in front of you really well. But sometimes I like to take videos like I'm taking now when I'm talking and filming what's in front of me. And the problem is my face is behind the phone and the microphone is on the other side of the phone and it makes the audio sound kind of muffled. Um, I don't have this problem on the LG G5 because there's only one microphone and that's at the bottom of the phone and it picks up audio um, from the front and the back of the phone pretty well. When you're taking a video using the front facing camera, like a selfie video, then it uses the microphone that's facing towards you, which is great because it, it means the audio sounds clearer because the microphone's facing towards your face. I just wish there was a way that you could switch between the two microphones because when I take a video like this of what's in front of me um, and I want to talk, I want the microphone to be able to pick up my voice as well. This is a test video on the iPhone 10, and I'm filming what's in front of me right now and I'm talking behind the phone and I'm not sure if you can notice it but the LG G5 audio sounds a lot better when I'm talking. If I move my mouth closer to the top of the phone like this I think it sounds a lot better because my mouth is closer to the microphone. It's just kind of difficult to film like this because I can't really see what's happening on the screen right now. So that's a bit of an inconvenience. I think it would have been a great idea if when you're taking a video using the rear facing camera, it would have been great if it uses both microphones at the same time so it can capture, capture audio in front of the camera and behind it at the same time. I guess you could buy one of those clip on mics that, that clip onto your shirt, uh, but there's no 3.5 millimeter jack hole. So you'd have to buy an adapter to plug one of those in. Or you could plug in the, the, the headphones that come with the phone, which also have a microphone attached to it. It's just kind of irritating because you don't need to fuss around like that with the LG G5. The LG G5 audio sounds great just using the built-in microphone. I also miss my wide-angle lens on my LG G5, which I can switch whilst making videos. Watch. See, you can switch. Look at the difference between that. This wide angle lens is so useful when, you, when you're inside of a, a small area. If you look at the iPhone's um, video, video mode, it's not that wide. It's quite narrow, actually. The only way you can make it wider is if you buy one of those clip-on wide angle lenses, which are quite bulky and kind of annoying to have stuck on your phone all of the time. Uh, the LG G5 is just so much better because you have the option of you have the option of a wide angle lens and a normal lens, which is really good. It's kind of annoying because most new phones, including phones like the Samsung S9, the Samsung Note 8, they're going for a dual lens setup. And they, ha they have a standard lens and a telephoto lens, which can blur out the background. Not a lot of phones are like the LG G5 with a um wide angle lens and standard lens dual setup. What would be really good, it would be great if someone made a phone with triple lenses on the back with a standard lens, a wide angle lens and a telephoto lens that can blur out the background because I don't want to have to choose between a telephoto blurring, background blurring lens and a wide angle lens. I want both of them. There's also no pause button during recording. You can record and then you can stop recording. And then if you want to start recording again, you have to press the record button again. But with the LG G5, there's a pause button. Look, I can pause it and resume recording during recording. So I don't have to keep stopping and restarting recording. It would be great if the iPhone also had a pause button. I don't know why iPhones don't have a pause button during video recording. It doesn't seem like it would be very, doesn't seem like it would be a very difficult thing to implement. Also, the lens sticks out from the back it's not completely flat and when you put it down onto a flat surface um, it moves it wobbles around so if you want to put the phone down onto a table and then type it's it's really annoying to do that because it wobbles around like that the lg g5 doesn't have that same problem you can see the lens does stick out a bit but it's it's even and it's right in the center of the phone so when you put it down onto a flat surface and then you try and make it wobble. It won't wobble, it's completely stable. And you can type on it when it's on the table and it's really good. And the final thing I dislike about it is there's no beauty filter for the photos or the videos. You can download apps 
to apply a beauty filter after you've taken a photo, but you can't use a beauty filter during video, which I've been doing on my old GG5, which is why you can't really see freckles on my face when I take videos. I have a lot of freckles, and you'll probably be able to see them when I take videos on this iPhone 10. And I just feel very insecure about my freckles, I don't like my freckles. I wish I didn't have freckles, but I think it's time to grow up a bit, time to face my fears, face my insecurities, and just face the facts that I have freckles, and maybe I should stop hiding them.